Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. Today's episode, I kind of want to do things a little bit differently. In most episodes, I talk to you a little bit about a new investing concept or big economic concept. And then at the end, I give you a piece of advice on where I think you should move forward, whether I think you should invest or private businesses, private equity, you know, whatever it might be. Usually at the end of the videos, I give a piece of advice to help move you in the right direction. Today's topic, I can't really think of a way to do that. Today's topic is just kind of pure edutainment, giving you guys some information and breaking it down in ways that are easy to understand and make you think a little. So with that being said, all over YouTube and the media, people are talking about yet again the government arguing with itself whether or not to raise the debt ceiling. What it would mean if they do, what it would mean if they don't, uh, if they don't, will the US default? And that people have all sorts of questions. So in today's episode, I want to explain to you two most common questions. Will the US default and has it ever defaulted in the past? And if it does default, what does that mean? All of these questions I'm going to be answering to you today in this episode. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so the first question I want to talk about is, has the US government ever defaulted before? And if I just had to give you a one sentence answer, my answer would be no, it's never defaulted outright. But the true answer is that it has defaulted in the sense that it's failed to meet its contractual agreements time and time again. Just as two examples, in 1933, we defaulted when we defaulted on our Liberty Bonds Agreement. And then again in 1971, when we closed the gold standard window. Now taking a brief trip through history, this all starts in 1890, when the US government began its over a century long period where it's been committing fraud against its people. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? What I mean by that is starting in 1890 is when the United States Treasury did not have enough gold in reserves to cover its liabilities. And this is due to fractional reserve banking. Fast forwarding all the way to 1933, multiple banks had what's called a bank run on them and the United States was just hemorrhaging gold. People were starting to find out or starting to believe that the government didn't have as much gold as they said they did to cover all of its financial and monetary positions that it had. In layman's terms, people were starting to wake up to the fact that there was way more money being created than gold backing it up in reserve. And in 1934, it all came to a head where we only had $4 billion in gold in reserves and we had over $22 billion in liabilities or in debts. So needless to say, we were deep into the negative. Knowing there was a real chance of default and not being able to pay back all the principal in these Liberty Bonds in gold, in 1938, when they matured, the government had to do something. So in 1934, the Gold Reserve Act was signed into law. The two main things that this new act did was that one, it made individual ownership of gold temporarily illegal and removed the paid in gold clause that was in these Liberty Bonds. So with this act coming into place in 1934, the US government no longer had to pay you the amount that you invested in them back in gold. They could just repay you in US dollars. And doubling down on that, it also made it illegal for individuals to own gold because the government was in severe need of more gold and they wanted individuals to stop hoarding it. Now really, this was one of the first times the US government had ever defaulted on its obligations. Now, it didn't necessarily default outright, like I said, it didn't not make its payments. It just found a creative way to make the payments. But either way, technically it would be considered a default because they did not uphold to the original agreements set forth in the bond itself. Fast forwarding all the way to 1971 and this same issue happens yet again. Yet again, we had way too much debt and way too little of gold in reserves to cover that debt. So it was the same issue. Now we were already off the gold standard as far as individually because of the Gold Reserve Act that we just got done talking about. But we were still paying and guaranteeing gold to other central banks and foreign governments who were investing and buying US government bonds. 
So in that sense, we were still obligated to pay them their due of gold. The same thing happened to foreign countries and foreign central banks that happened in the 1930s with individuals. They were starting to wake up to the fact that there was way too many dollars in circulation and there was very little chance that they actually had that much gold in reserves. So all the other central banks and all the other foreign governments that were investing in government bonds, they wanted all their gold back. They were like, nope, uh, we don't want to reinvest. We don't want your dollars. We want our gold. Realizing the jig was up and the government was very likely not to be able to satisfy those debtors in gold that they needed, Nixon ended our relationship with the gold standard and closed the gold window. After that gold window was closed, we were no longer obligated to pay individuals or other foreign bodies in gold. We were effectively fully switched off and into a fiat currency where it was just backed by the US government and nothing more. Just like the first time in the 1970s, we defaulted yet again because we failed to meet the original obligated terms in the bond contracts that were supposed to go to other central banks and other foreign nations. So once again, I'm gonna repeat my answer to you. Have we ever defaulted outright? No, but in technical terms, the true answer is yes. And now on to the next question. Will the government ever default again? Surprisingly enough, the answer is no. The US government will never default on its debt ever again. And that is because of a law that was signed into effect in 2011. Now, everyone should be worried about inflation. Everyone should be worried about the government spending, the government deficit. These are all huge topics that everyone needs to attempt to hold the government accountable for. But when it comes to actually defaulting on its liabilities, it is now physically impossible for the US government to ever default. Let me explain why. Now that we are off the gold standard and are a strictly fiat based currency, the government can just create money into existence. Now currently this is through a series of quantitative easing and lending and they're borrowing money from the Federal Reserve into existence. But either way, we have the monopoly on creating our own money. Now it seems like every year at this point, we run into the problem of we've reached our debt ceiling because of way too much government spending. And I'm pretty sure every single time it's ever happened, the government just elects to raise the debt ceiling and to keep raising it and raising it and raising it. But let's just say they were never allowed to raise the debt ceiling and increase their credit limit ever again. There was a hard law that was passed and it was impossible to overturn it. Let's just assume for a second, we could never raise the debt ceiling ever again. There would come a point relatively soon where we would reach that debt ceiling and everyone would start to panic. What's gonna happen? We can't raise the debt ceiling and you know what are we gonna do? Now this next part is the interesting thing that was signed in 2011. Even if we were completely maxed out on credit, we could still operate based on selling goods. There's different ways where the government can use tricky financing to not increase their debt, but to also increase the monetary supply. Signed into 2011 were two tricky accounting techniques. One is called the trillion dollar coin and another is called a premium bond. Now, the trillion dollar coin I think is the most interesting, so we'll talk about that first. The trillion dollar coin is really just a gimmick, but it was signed into law to make it a reality. And this loophole is really as simple as the United States Treasury creating a platinum coin. Now, that platinum coin will be valued at one trillion dollars, two trillion, whatever the really the dollar amount they need or want is. Now the platinum that that coin is made of doesn't have to equal that value, just the actual value of the coin. Just like there's really no true value to the dollar bill other than what the government says it is, the same thing is true. This trillion dollar platinum coin won't actually be worth a trillion dollars. It will just be worth a trillion dollars because the government says it is. So they'll take this trillion dollar coin and sell it to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve will then print money into existence and credit the US Treasury $1 trillion. So what we just did here was take a relatively small amount of platinum, make a coin, just say it was valued at a trillion dollars and sell it to the Federal Reserve. And in turn, we got a trillion dollars worth of cash inside the US Treasury. None of that is operated based on debt. We actually created something and sold it. So it's more operated based on supply and 
and demand. Either way though, it makes no sense that this coin that is probably only worth a few hundred dollars in platinum is being valued at a trillion just because the government says it is. And the next bit of tricky accounting, if they didn't want to make trillion dollar coins or if somehow platinum is just too hard to get a hold of, instead they can offer what's known as premium bonds. Now if we were already completely maxed out on credit, then this probably wouldn't work because we're already at that credit limit. However, a premium bond in the eyes of the government is honestly just a flat lie. How the premium bond works in the eyes of the government is that if I am the government, I'll write down on my ledger that I have a million dollar debt with you. But in reality, you're going to give me $2 million and I'll still pay you the interest on the $2 million, don't worry. And at the end of the bond's maturity, I'll still give you your $2 million that you gave me. So we're really gonna be functioning like it's a $2 million note, just on paper, on the ledger, we're gonna write like it's only a $1 million note. And really there's no other way I could describe it other than this is just an accounting trick that's honestly just a blatant lie. But nevertheless, the government has a full monopoly on money and therefore can do really whatever it wants to to keep growing the money supply. Just because the debt ceiling will be raised and eventually stop being raised doesn't mean the money supply will stop growing. This is why the government will never again default on any of its obligations. Because even if the credit limits were completely maxed out with nothing but premium bonds, meaning they're double whatever it actually says they are, there's also the trillion dollar coin gimmick where they can just say this coin's valued at whatever it is, sell it to the Federal Reserve, and get the cash that way. Ever since 2011, it is physically impossible for the US government to ever again default on any of its liabilities. But that doesn't mean everything's well and dandy because obviously all that kind of debt, all that kind of monetary printing just only further exacerbates all of the inflation. So circling all the way back to the beginning, no one should be freaking out about the debt ceiling or the possibility of defaults because it is physically impossible. But everyone desperately needs to be focused on the importance of inflation, mitigating it in your portfolio and watching it to make sure the government is actually spending moderately and appropriately and holding them accountable any way possible if they aren't. I hope you got value in this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or just want something addressed, I have a dedicated Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account, or you could just leave a comment down below. Either way though, the choice is yours, and I'll see you in the next episode.